Well, the RTX 5090 might not be what you thought it was. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Okay, so the RTX 50 series has got to be one of the most hyped generations we've had in quite some time, and there's been a ton of leaks ranging from people such as Red Gaming Tech over on YouTube to Copite 7 Kimi on Twitter and many, many more that have enabled me to put together charts in the past showing that yes, the 5090 could be anywhere from 60 to 80% faster thanks to far more cores, higher clock speeds, and a brand new architecture design that's going to lead to far higher performance. And the ray tracing is supposed to be even faster than that. So there's a ton of hype around these new graphics cards, but you might want to hold on to your seats here because things just got a whole lot crazier as once again, we got more information from the leaker Copite 7 Kimi, who is claiming that power draw is going to be going up. In fact, we take a look here at exactly what he said. In response to another Twitter user, Ryachu, he basically confirmed that the RTX 5090 would apparently see 600 watts for its total board power is what I'm reading into this is what it's likely going to be. And then the RTX 5080 could be increasing it all the way up to 400 watts. Now, that's pretty wild because the current RTX 4080 is actually coming in with a TDP of 320 watts and the 4090 at 450 watts. So an increase of roughly 80 watts for the 80 class and 150 watts for the 90 class is definitely nothing to sneeze at. And that's actually starting to make me question, are we even talking about the RTX 5090? Because surely they couldn't be going up in power that much yet again. In fact, even more information that came out from the YouTuber Red Gaming Tech surrounding the RTX 5090 leads me to believe that there's going to be a ton of changes to this generation. In fact, he leaked that apparently there's going to be something called the RTX Titan AI, and this appears to be the fully unlocked GPU and would likely have a lot more memory than the 5090 as well. And he also had Panzerlide over on a forum back him up another leaker claiming that actually the 5090 is only using a 448-bit memory bus and it seems as though he's alluding to the idea that the 512-bit bus may be reserved for an even larger GPU, and that larger GPU is likely to be the RTX Titan AI. But if we go ahead and take a look at this chart that I've thrown together here, guys, I think we can start to piece together what the RTX 50 series is going to look like with this new information about the power draw. Now, let's talk about the RTX 5090 first. Like I mentioned earlier, originally we were expecting this to be the fully unlocked die, but as more information has come forward, Forward, and I've even heard people, once again, like Red Gaming Tech mention, who also has a ton of inside sources, it seems like, because he gets a lot of stuff right as well, that it's likely going to be cut down at this point in time, somewhere around 160 streaming multiprocessors. Now, streaming multiprocessors, think of those as the cores, and 160, roughly, I'm estimating 168, would be a significant reduction from the fully unlocked 192 that we're supposed to be seeing on the full GPU die. In fact, if Panzer Light is to be believed as well that 448-bit bus cut down from 512 would also mean that the RTX 5090 would be packing 28 gigabytes of GDDR7 instead of 32, running likely at 28 gigabits per second for 1,568 gigabytes per second of total memory bandwidth. Now, I do believe that the board power could be increasing, and it is certainly possible that the maximum board power of this GPU could be 600 watts, but I actually think that the TDP of this GPU will remain somewhere between 450 to 500 watts. Now, the reason as to why I say that is because yeah, they aren't going to be shifting to a way, way better node, and the clock speeds are going up, so I wouldn't be surprised to see TDPs go up a little bit, but 600 watts is a massive jump, and surely there have been some redesigns to the architecture to make it more efficient, running at higher clock speeds, and coming out with a 600 watt GPU when there's no competition from AMD for their 90 class cards, at least not yet, not until RDNA 5, seems a little premature to be doing, and I do believe they are going to be reserving that for a 
professional style of GPU, thereby not making gamers complain about further and further increasing TDPs getting out of hand. And that's where I think the RTX Titan AI is going to come forward and this is where things get a little bit wild because in terms of the specs yes this is the fully unlocked gpu the 192 sms the over 3 gigahertz clock speeds 32 gigabytes of gddr7 and getting close to 1800 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth and yeah i think this one would be the gpu that could potentially have up to a 600 watt tdp or total board power at least if nvidia chooses to do so and this leak from cop 87 kimi turns out to be true. Now, those specs are wild because we're talking about, I believe it was somewhere between 70 or maybe even closer to 80% more cores than the 4090. And we're also talking about a massive increase in clock speed, more RAM, way more memory bandwidth, around 80% higher, and of course, higher TDPs as well. But what I want to talk about to you guys is where are these things going to be in terms of the pricing, the release date, and the performance overall. And let's start off with the RTX 5090, because this is the one I think everybody's been expecting to be the flagship GPU. And I'm here to tell you that's probably not going to be the case if the Titan AI really exists. And I don't see why they wouldn't create it again, if they're not gonna have competition for some time until RDNA 5, which by the way, do get subscribed if you wanna hear about RDNA 5, I will be covering that as well. But yeah, the 5090 in terms of the actual pricing, I do believe will fall in line somewhat similar with the RTX 4090, probably 1599, maybe at most 1799, but I don't expect them to really push the price of the RTX 5090 by too much. And in terms of the maximum theoretical performance, we're talking around 60% faster, although, yeah, in actual gaming, it may fall a little bit short of that. And in terms of a release date, I'm actually expecting at this point in time, early 2025, as I have not heard a whole lot about the 5090 in some time. And we're starting to get closer and closer to the end of the year. It's seeming like an end of the year launch is becoming less likely, although it's certainly not out of the question. It could still happen. But now let's talk about the RTX Titan AI. And this is crazy, this thing. Yeah, I think you're going to be paying upwards of close to $2,500 for this GPU if you want the fully unlocked car. Now, it is going to give you on paper up to 80% higher performance and could, I think, in fact, would be more likely to be releasing first, potentially by the end of the year to probably, let's be honest, milk some NVIDIA fans and content creators like myself for everything we've got. But yeah, that's going to be a really, really crazy card. But at the same time, I think this is going to make a lot of people pretty mad because yeah, prices going that high is crazy. I mean, the last time that we saw NVIDIA pushing even higher prices was the 3090 Ti. Now, I don't think that the 3090 Ti was super successful as they didn't try to go back to $2,000 again with the 4090, but certainly I wouldn't consider, at least in my opinion, it to be a financial failure on Nvidia's part. Had they released that at the right time, it could have been a great success for them financially, considering all of the crazy crypto mining that was going on just before that thing was released. So it seems like they released it at just the wrong time, and I wouldn't be surprised if they try and up the price once again with this Titan AI and re-bring out the Titan branding as Red Gaming Tech is suggesting. It just makes a lot of sense. Instead of giving you what you should have gotten, the RTX 5090 fully unlocked at $1,600, they're gonna give you essentially, again, what should have been the 5090 at $2,500. And let's be honest, there's gonna be some people out there who are gonna pay that. Now, content creators, sure, we're gonna pay that, or maybe if we're lucky, certain outlets will get it sent to them by Nvidia. Who knows? But for regular buyers, this is definitely a dangerous precedent to be crossing over $2,000 on a GPU, and I'm worried that this could start to become the norm. Now, I hope that doesn't happen, but I am starting to think it probably will. Again, the performance is gonna be probably really, really good. I mean, take a look at this estimated performance chart that I've thrown together. It's gonna be very tempting to buy one of these cards looking at this level of performance, but you may wanna consider waiting as I do believe Nvidia will be forced to bring out a 5080 Ti in response to RDNA 5 later, if you're willing to wait, that will probably bring far, far better price to performance. But if you can't wait and you want the fastest GPU right away, yeah, you're probably gonna have to pay big bucks for at least a 5090, at least at $1,600, if not a Titan AI at $2,500. But that's just what I think. Do you think NVIDIA is really gonna try and push $2,500 for their best GPU this time? 
or do you think they're gonna stick to $1,600? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you wanna see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.